Welcome back to Plague Size Studios, everyone. Ryan here, and on today's episode of Explained, I'm covering what might be one of the most overlooked and underrated, though simultaneously kind of overrated, depending on the application, uh, tools to shaping your tube amps, volume, and tone. And I'm, of course, talking about this little brown toroidal box thing, which happens to be a variable voltage transformer, or as some of you may know more casually, as the Variac. I'm going to be talking about how these things operate, what they do to your tube amplifier, how it affects its sound, and how you might even find elements of these designs in newer amplifiers, and you can access it at the flip of a switch. So to understand the importance of a variable transformer or a variac, which is kind of like saying Kleenex instead of tissue paper or Coke instead of cola, um, so I'll be using those kind of interchangeably. This is not a brand name Variac, and I would uh, strongly recommend if you're going to use such a thing on a vintage amplifier to spend a little bit more money than I did for a single video. But when it comes to the concept of a voltage transformer, you really have to understand that electricity isn't magical, right? Uh, when we plug into a wall socket, it's not like everything just runs off of 110 or 120 or, you know, if we're talking about three-phase stuff, 220 volts. Whether we're talking about the transformer found in your tube amplifier or the wall wart you use to charge your phone, most of the time, the voltage that's coming out of your wall socket isn't going to play too nice with your electronics, and something has to be done to change that, whether it be dropping down the voltage to, say, 9 or 12 volts, um, or even if you have to change over from alternating current to direct current, you know, stuff like guitar pedals. You don't want to use an AC power supply on something like your tube screamer, like I did and accidentally fried mine one time. So oftentimes, sort of the first job of an electronics design engineer or manufacturer is to take whatever region they're working in, take that voltage and frequency, and build something around it to convert it play nice with their product. And so nowadays, you really don't have to worry about it too much. You know, if you buy a US laptop, it's going to come with a US charger and you don't have to really think about it. Plug and play, you're good to go. But for some oddball equipment, some industrial applications, or even some, say, vintage amplifiers that run on strictly 110 volts and you have a 125 volt socket, you could run into some issues enter the variable voltage transformer. So this little beige Amazon special and any other Variac variant of that does what any other transformer does. It takes incoming voltage and either steps it up or down while conserving power. What does that mean? Well, power, of course, is the product between voltage and current, or V times I. So if one raises, the other one has to lower proportionally. And so if we raise voltage on this, the current's gonna drop and vice versa. As you see, I've got this little dial on top, and as I turn it this way, you can see the output voltage is dropping. I've got it around 75 now, turn it up, I'm at my baseline 110, so it's no different than if it were coming right off the wall. I can even turn it all the way up to about 130 volts. Now for the application of guitar amplifiers, I would not recommend you ever turn these things up higher than what's coming out of your wall socket, because that's what the amp was designed to do. Now, it might be able to handle it, and on a good design, stuff should be over spec but if you have you know, certain resistors or even the transformer that's not spec to handle that kind of voltage, then you might run into some issues and you know, might have to send some stuff in for repair. So when we're talking about Variax, when it comes to guitar amps specifically, we're only going to be turning down the voltage, which is an important distinction because on, say, AxeFX firmware, you can dive through some of the advanced parameters and you're going to find a button that's labeled Variac, and you can turn it either way. It's marked as a percentage, and it's going to do the same thing that you're going to hear in this video. And on that modeling platform, you can safely turn up the voltage and you're going to hear some interesting things happen. Uh, but in the real world, let's just stick with turning things down. Now, you might be wondering, why couldn't we just use a potentiometer or a rheostat? to do the same thing. You know, you got a guitar volume knob, that's basically the same thing, you're just bleeding voltage off. First of all, when we're talking about potentiometers in particular, those are only really used in you know, low current, low voltage applications, at least relative to what's happening in this Variac, and it's not a big deal to be bleeding off signal in that way on a low output guitar electronic system, and that's why we use amplifiers to begin with. But 
if you're going to be bleeding off a lot of wattage, that has to go somewhere in the form of heat. And so it's a lot of waste and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you could just step it up or down in a different manner without a whole lot of loss. As I was saying earlier, in an ideal transformer, power is conserved, but of course, nothing is ideal. You're going to have some mechanical losses here and there. In fact, just sitting here, according to this, I'm using a couple watts uh, without even having anything plugged in. But, you know, not a big deal. That's all well and good in theory, but what does this really have to do with guitar playing and amplifier tone? Well, for that answer, we're going to revisit a somewhat muddled story from the early days of guitar icon Eddie Van Halen who apparently after the purchase of his first 100 watt Marshall Super Lead amp discovered the same thing that we all do when we get a high watt tube amp and that is that they're they're fucking loud okay i mean you do not appreciate how loud these beasts are until you try to play one at anywhere near max volume especially in a confined space like this but even in a full band setting if you're in a small venue it's just it's too much and the, the problem was compounded, especially back in those days, because there was no such thing as a master volume. Your preamp volume, aka gain, and your output volume are one and the same. So it's like running everything with, with master volume on 10. And if you're trying to get preamp distortion, or especially power amp distortion, which, you know, plexi amps really rely on, um, you're going to be at ear bleeding volume. So... He was like, there's got to be something I could do to be able to play this thing and still get that distortion I'm looking for. Well, he orders a second one, and supposedly it comes in from England, and it's set to 220 volts on the back without him realizing it. So he plugs into an American wall socket. It's taking forever to heat up, but once it finally does, it's quiet, and it still kind of sounds like it's overdriven and distorted. And he's like, okay, there's something to this. This is cool. I can actually control the output volume with voltage. Neat. Supposedly his next idea was to plug into a light dimmer, which as you probably imagine, ended in disaster and popped immediately because those things are not meant to handle that kind of wattage. So he goes down to the hardware store and asks for something that can do that sort of thing, that you know voltage step down, and he's presented with the Variac. And the rest is apparently history as he recorded all the landmark early Van Halen albums with that. He would rehearse with it, he'd gig with it, and according to him, he'd turn it down to even as low as 60 volts for some of the really small venues that didn't need that much volume, and generally recorded around 90-ish volts, which is where I'm going to be kind of taking advantage of in this video, between 80 and 90 most of the time. Now, he used this as more or less a fancy master volume control, right? I mean, that's what he was wanting, is to uh, you know, overall lower the output level of the amplifier, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, a master volume control sits between the preamp and the power amp. So it controls how much you're driving the power tubes. It really drastically changes the voicing on a lot of amplifiers. I mean, this thing goes from extremely tight and contemporary to kind of that barky, low mid plexi thing we all know. And so it doesn't behave the same in that regard. But with a voltage regulator, you're not just changing the voltage of you know, one part of the circuit, you're changing the source voltage to everything. This once again brings us back around to the concept of headroom, which is a term I, I use a lot on this channel. And we talk about it in several ways. We'll say like, maybe this amplifier's clean channel has a ton of headroom, it'll never distort, but you, know, you compare it to this amplifier's clean channel and doesn't have as much headroom because of the same volume, it's starting to clip and break up a little bit. Or we'll say like a pedal like this has a, hair there, has a ton of clean headroom because you can boost it all the way up to like 20 dB and it's never going to clip, so the headroom for days. Um, or we'll talk about like pedal circuits, say like um, an OCD or um, comparable pedals that can run on either 9 volts or even 12 or 18 volts for more headroom. So what are we talking about there? Well, you can kind of think of headroom as a threshold for clipping, for breakup, in addition to the volume cut, when it comes to tube amplifiers running on a Variac, there's a few interesting things you might pick up on, especially with an amplifier like this running at either max or high master volumes. So the first thing I notice is kind of a compressed low end, and not necessarily that there's a ton of bass roll off, but that big resonance peak you usually get from a speaker's impedance, you know, that the negative feedback network is kind of trying to take care of, that doesn't seem to jump out as much. It's a little more squashed, a little compressed. It's still there, but the peaks aren't nearly as harsh and, and everything just kind of 
sits more the same, whether you're, you know, picking really hard or not. It's just always kind of a constant. And the high end definitely gets snotty, a little grisly. And that is precisely the sound I think of when I think Variac equipped, you know, brown sound Marshall amplifier. It is just that, you know, pissed off plexi that, you know, it has enough articulation, but it's still kind of compressed and, and chewy sounding in a way. And that's what a Variac is really good at. On my last episode of Explained, I was demonstrating how this gain switch, which is a clipping diode mod between the preamp and power sections, also known as a Jose mod, does something kind of similar where you limit the headroom after the preamp section, you start distorting more because you're cutting off some of those peaks. Things get a little nasty, you know, some of the dynamics disappear, things become more compressed and squashed and kind of nasally in that way. Um, and as a result, you cut your output volume as well. Obviously, this is happening at one specific part of the circuit and not globally like the Variac does, but it's kind of a similar concept. So if you've never heard of this, you can kind of think, it, think about it in you know, the terms of those saturation mods that came later. <laughs> While you could certainly run just about any guitar amp off of a Variac within its acceptable voltage ranges, some just have one built in for you, and you may not have even known it. So Bogner is relatively straightforward with their Variac implementations because it says Variac, so some of their heads have a switch. I know, I uh, believe a Helios does, I think the Ecstasy does, and from my understanding, they're just running off of a different tap on their main transformer, so it's technically a you know, a voltage regulator is just not necessarily having to use a, a, a different transformer to achieve that. Uh, we get to Mesa Boogie heads, and on my Mark IV, you have this full power and tweed power option. That's pretty much a Variac. They're doing the same thing, lowering the overall output level from 85 watts down to 50 at most with tweed. I personally really enjoy this tweed mode on the clean channel, as you can certainly evoke some of those Fender Princeton style breakup tones that this thing is obviously inspired from. And it's really sweet when you put it in like class A and triode, you get this thing really quiet, which is pretty cool coming from an 85 watt amp. But once you start getting into more high gain or even mid gain territories, I find the the lack of headroom starts to kind of rub me the wrong way. What I really like about tube amplifiers is you know, that big bottom end and all the reactivity you get based off of the speakers and it loses some of that on tweed mode. Now, if you hear it out of context, you probably will never notice. And for, you know, lower volume recordings, I would have no problem with it. But set side by side, especially when you equalize the volumes, I highly prefer full power on the Mesa Mark IV at least. The dual and triple rectifiers, and I guess by extension, the Roadsters and Road Kings also feature a similar control. In fact, I believe it's the exact same thing. It's just labeled as bold and spongy, which is a good way to put it, as I've been trying to describe the sound of this phenomenon, uh, you know, compressed, squashed, spongy is a good way of putting it. Um, but, you know, when it comes to a dual rec specifically, 
if you can select it by channel, that's a great option. You know, be able to have that sag, that give on a clean channel or even a plexi inspired sound. But for the classic 90s dual rec tone, you know, if I'm going to be boosting it with a clean boost or tube screamer, I want that bold option. I want the full headroom. I want it to punch me in the chest. I don't want any sort of compression. I just want a lot of preamp distortion and let the amp do the rest of the talking. Um, same thing with like the silicon diode tracking. I think the you know the tube rectification is really cool on mid gain and lower gain stuff, but um, that is a tight metal sound that is pretty much the exact opposite of what I like from the Van Halen Brown sound. However, if you're like me and you own a single rectifier, well, at least you can hook it up to one of these things and simulate what it would sound like on the spongy setting, which is kind of cool. That ultimately brings us to the final question. Should you own a Variac? Should you be using it as a tube amplifier tonal tool? I'd say for most of us, no. Um, there's a couple cases where you probably should. Um, number one, if you have a really vintage amplifier that doesn't run on a you know standard voltage, then yeah, I mean, you pretty much have to have one. I would spend more than I've spent on a quality unit to ensure you know it's getting the, the quality power that it needs. Um, or two, if you're really, really anal about to your power tube life and all that, then running this kind of stuff at lower voltages will make it last longer. And that is a good side effect that we didn't really touch on. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that the, the side effects are worth it, though, in terms of guitar tone and volume. Because if you're going for lower volume, there's there's way better ways to do it nowadays. We've got attenuators, we've got load boxes with built-in attenuators. They'll go down to like 20 dB on that. Um, you've got little cheap resistive attenuators that may not sound as good, but it'll get you started. And that's a lot more significant than the three, six decibels that all, you know, a lot of the times it might make a difference for gigs, maybe rehearsals, but uh, not for bedroom playing. You're gonna need more than that. And then for the whole spongy, grisly tones that you get out of the Variac. It can definitely be cool, especially on British style amplifiers, but for high gain stuff, I didn't care for it on the Mark IV. I really didn't like it on the rectifier. So your mileage may vary and it's all gonna boil down to what you like, but unless you're going for that specific sound, I think there's better ways to do it. Just use a pedal, use a compressor, use an overdrive. And ultimately, if you crank up a master volume equipped Plexi, you know, everything to 10 and start playing around with the, you know, the relationship between the preamp gain and the master volume, you'll get that Van Halen style sound. Of course, you will have to play like him to actually sound like him, but the Variac is one piece of the puzzle and that's not going to make or break your guitar tone. It's not going to magically make your disparate rig sound like Eddie. It's just the way these things go. So, I guess, long story short, if you like it as a novelty or you want to play around with it for your, you know, with your rig, then hey, 50, 75 bucks ain't going to kill us. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm not going to be using it anytime soon for my own productions to say the least. So with that, thank you so very much for watching as always. I greatly appreciate it. Any other questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll try to get to them and uh, ask around if I don't know the answer. We'll see you next time. Bye.